Welcome back to Great Day. After overdosing four times and going to rehab 12 times, our next guest felt helpless and hopeless in her addiction. After getting busted for a crime, Monica had one more chance to get it right or go to prison. That chance came from a drug court judge. That opportunity saved her life, and now she's joined the fight to save others. All right. Um, wow, you were deep in it. Uh, mm -hmm. But how you started out, and I, and I think one of the things we want to do, too, with, with drug addiction is erase that stereotype yeah. mm -hmm. of you must be a bad person mm -hmm. or whatever, right? Yeah. You Life for you in the beginning was normal childhood, right? It was. It was. I always say when I share my story that I am living proof that this disease does not discriminate. I had a you know, great childhood, great upbringing. Church-going family. Church-going family, yes. But my addiction took me places that I never, ever imagined I would be. Yeah. yeah. All right. You tried smoking and drinking with friends in the 70s, and mm -hmm. people would argue what teen didn't, right? right. I mean, that, that was just one of those things that a lot of, of kids did. Uh, but things got out of control. At what point did you realize, even that early, that this is not just experimenting or doing what teens mm -hmm. do, it was something a little more serious? Right. Um, I got in a lot of car wrecks from drinking. I think I totaled four cars before I graduated from high school. Um, always wondered, you know, looking back, why my parents didn't put me in treatment, but, you know, we just really didn't know how bad it was. Yeah. I didn't realize that I had a problem at that point. Oftentimes we'll say that, that addiction um, is the symptom of something else. Absolutely. Right? And I think that's the thing to keep in mind too. Um, people that are part of drug court programs have been through the system repeatedly and often it's high risk and high need. Yeah. Um, and I think that Monica has, has sort of shown that that is the her profile yeah. in this. And one of your triggers was losing your father. Yes. And that kind of sent you over the edge. Um, you had four near-death experiences. I want you to explain to folks at home, so I think people who have not been around this or not exposed to it don't understand. They, they would say, well, you almost died. you got to stop. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's much tougher than that. It is so tough. Um, the disease of addiction is so powerful. It, it's not enough to, for some people to go to jail. It's not enough to almost die. It's not enough to lose your family. Um, no matter how hard you want to stop, you just, I couldn't stop. Yeah. I oftentimes hear um, people say the best thing that happened to them was to get arrested mm -hmm. because, you know, and, and normally, maybe not, but when you right. have a, a city that has a drug court, that could be the best thing that happens. Now, if you have an opportunity to get into one of these treatment court programs, which I think Monica can really speak to yeah. having having gone through one, it, it is a chance to get your life back and remove all obstacles from your success. And, you know, I know, Monica, one of the things about your addiction is, is your introduction to opioids became um, it was because of surgery, correct? Mm -hmm. Right. Can you talk a little bit about that? Um, yes. Well, you mentioned my dad. So when my dad passed away, um, I started drinking a lot. And a few years, I just kept that up, you know, instead of grieving. And a few years later, I had a surgery. And at that point, I got addicted to opioids. Yeah, you're like and so many people who that was never in their their, yeah. their mind, right? And that conversion. Mm -hmm. And then that can easily trip over into heroin use because it would be cheaper. But then the other thing happened. You were kind of like the fox in the hen house. You got a job working for a doctor. I did. I worked for a doctor so I knew how to write prescriptions. I knew how to call in prescriptions and I started doing that. You know, I was so desperate. I met people, you know, off the streets that I never thought I would meet before to, you know, buy drugs. I would write prescriptions. I got caught after yeah. doing that for a year and a half. That's another part of the dragnet, if, if you will, is that we've kind of tightened up what we can do with prescriptions as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Okay. So you got caught. I got caught. Uh -huh. And so what they did is put me on probation. Um, this is the first time I was on probation. And that didn't work because you're on probation. Well, you just probation your, doesn't address no, the issue, right? No, it didn't. You know, they, they didn't give me treatment. They just kind of, like said, you need to come and report and take random UAs. And so, yeah, that didn't work. So I went back into treatment over and over again until I finally got arrested. Yeah. All right. That wonderful day. When you March. face that judge in court, mm -hmm. What was your expectation and what happened instead? I had no idea really what I was up against. Um, it was a judge. The, it was a judge. <laughs> you know, you know? Crime, right, yeah. And, you know, the experience that I've had with probation and, and the, the court system, um, I was expecting someone to be, you know, mean and throw that gavel down. And instead, he was very engaging and understood what and I was going through. wanted to know about through. your life, right? wanted to know about my life, yes. How did, how did you get there? Go ahead. 
how did I get? Yeah, the, the, the key that you want to know is how you got there, but you were going to say? Yeah. No, I was just going to say, can you talk a little bit about the team and how the treatment really was implemented and how that helped you? Absolutely. So the great thing about drug court is that it is a treatment, it's a team, it's a family. Um, it's a win-win situation. You have treatment and you have the judici judicial, judicial system to back you up. You know, people that really understand what addiction is and they set you up for success, unlike regular probation where it, it's really set up for failure. Yeah. Um, drug court, they want to see you succeed. I you heard know. someone say that at first they went into it not necessarily thinking they could do it for themselves, mm -hmm. but because they loved so everybody as part of that team mm -hmm. so much, they wanted to succeed for them. Mm -hmm. And then finally said, yes. oh wait, it's gotta be for me. Definitely, definitely. So when you had treatment providers on your team, you had the judge and, and the whole team the worked whole together team. Yeah, yeah. on your behalf. Mm -hmm. What was your coming to Jesus moment where you said, okay, I've already been 12 times to rehab, I've overdosed four times, this is the moment that's going to make the difference. What was that coming to Jesus moment like? Because we say you've been to, to rehab 12 times, we think you've already been through a program, mm -hmm. right? What made this one so different? Um, this one was different because I knew that I was dying um, and I didn't want to die. I didn't want to go to prison. Um, right before I got arrested, my mother had called me to her house and she said, I have one thing left to give you. She had you know, tried, helped with treatment and helped with the kids and she said, I'm going to give you my burial plot because that's all I have to give you. Um, that's all I have left. That's all I can do. And I was okay with that because I knew I was dying. Yeah, um, yeah. My mother died a year ago yesterday and she's able to keep her burial plot. Wow. And she got to see you live a life that you are proud of now because yeah. I think that's the that's what's yeah, so proof wonderful. That it works, right? Yeah, and what are you what are you doing now? I'm, I'm a licensed chemical dependency counselor. Okay. I, you went a long way to get a good resume. <laughs> right? Yeah, right. yeah, a real long yeah. way, yes. Um, I'm a licensed chemical, chemical dependency counselor. I've actually worked with drug court clients um, on my caseload. So I get to see not not only my life and what I've gotten to do, but I get to see other people, yeah. you know, do amazing things and because so of drug court. And it's so important to have somebody, when you're talking to someone, I can't talk to somebody and say, yeah. you, you can do this, right? Mm -hmm. You can't talk to somebody yeah. in that way that you can. Right. And yeah. that's so important to hear somebody who can say, I was just as bad as you were mm -hmm. or or worse than, than it. Absolutely. And they, I don't that as in a bad person as no. in terms of in the addiction and the process you know, yeah, yeah yeah and what I, I love about your story too is you know, we were talking and you, know, you have lost your family mm -hmm. and through this program and through you getting your life back you now have a beautiful relationship with your family and yes. you lost your family because you weren't you anymore right and so now that you're you and I think a better you mm -hmm. um, your family you can be reunited in that right. way. And I think the other thing about you know having Monica serving in this role in the community is critical. Look at what our community gets. Yeah. We get and we Monica. Need more. And we get Monica as somebody who is a licensed chemical dependency counselor. And we are in the in facing an epidemic of addiction in this country. We need more licensed chemical dependency yeah. counselors. And people aren't knocking down the doors to do those jobs. And nobody can do that job better than Monica yeah. because she's been there. So we as a community get some a really valuable and productive member back home by contributing that chance. I always say um, sometimes you don't choose your mission, your mission chooses you. That's right. Your mission chose you and you're carrying it out very that's well. Right. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your story with us because that's also you. part of it is being able to put a face to those numbers we talk about mm -hmm. and say that was me mm -hmm. doesn't define me. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. All right up next when you ask why did you ever start using in the first place many times the answer is to self-medicate. Many vets suffer from addiction as a way to cope with PTSD and other issues. A special court for veterans works to remove the addiction and deal with the original problem next.